Hello everyone, my name is Luca. I'm working in the Visual C++ cross-platform team whose focus is to create user experiences for C++ developers that target Unix-like operating systems such as Linux and Mac OS. In this video, I'm going to show you a new Visual Studio tool window, the Remote File Explorer. Its primary functionality is to let users to interact with the file system of a remote machine. To get started, you need to ensure you have installed the Remote File Explorer component, which is installed along with the Linux workload here. So you can see here the Linux workload is checked and the Remote File Explorer for Linux component is checked as well. Let's, let's close the currently open tool window here and let's open a project which is the Ballet Physics SDK, which is a CMake based C project which can target Windows and Linux. You can open the Remote File Explorer from the View item on the main menu bar and then selecting the Remote File Explorer menu item. And as you can see, we are connected to this remote instance. If you ever created a new entry, the connection manager of Visual Studio, you can select any of those in the remote or speaker, which is this one, and start interacting with the file system of that remote machine. So for example, I can connect to localhost here and browse the file system. If you never created an entry in the connection manager, you can open up the connection manager and just add a new entry following this dialog. With the remote file explorer, you can execute ordinary operations on files and directory, such as upload, download, rename, delete, either by using the context menu or by using the button from the toolbar at the top. You can download a single file or you can download an entire subtree by downloading a remote directory. Likewise, you can upload to any remote directory an entire local subtree or one or more files from the local computer to the remote host. Since we opened the bullet tree SDK, project. Let's assume that we want to download the built artifacts. So let's build it and I'm using CMake presets here. So you see here I'm selected localhost is the same that I've selected it here. The build succeeded so it means that we generated all the build artifacts of all the targets. So let's assume that I want to download the build artifacts of the hello world project. And here it is, so it would be nice to have a gesture to go directly to the currently selected debugging target. We don't have it yet though. In this case, what we can do here is let's download it, the whole subtree under the downloads local directory. Okay, we have done it. Let's take a look at it. And we have all the files here. Now let's do the other way around. Let's upload all the files that we just downloaded to the same parent directory here, which is examples. So you can say upload a directory to examples. Let's select this one. And as you can imagine, we are going to overwrite all the files that we just downloaded. In this case, we get this prompt with question. So what are we going to do? Replace them all, skip all of them, on. let's decide for each of them. Well, let's do this, but only for the very first one, where we can just take a quick look at what is the question, and we can decide for each file if we want to rewrite it or not, and we can apply the same decision to all of them, and in this case, I'm just going to do it, and that's it. 
So we just overwrote all the remote files with the same files that we just downloaded. This might be useful if you want to see what is the build output and you want to inspect the files. Whenever we start a long running operation, we can cancel it anytime by clicking, by interacting, I'd say, with the status operation entry at the bottom of the UI. For example, if I'm going to download all this SRC directory, which contains all the source code of the bullet tree physics engine project, I can just cancel it by pressing here, the cancel button. We can also open multiple tool windows and connect to any of the remote machine listed in the connection manager. We can open a new window by pressing the new window button on the toolbar and then we select the remote host. For example, in this case, let's connect to the local host, which I believe as of now, it's the machine it's up and running, but as I say, SSH server is not up and running. So let's fix this up by starting up the remote server. Now that it is up and running, I can just click on reconnect and we are reconnected to the machine. And we can also have them side by side by, you know, drag and drop here the window. Now it, it is very tempting now to drag and drop elements among multiple remote file explorer, but those are not really yet supported. We do support though the drag and drop from the local system, from the local computer to the remote file explorer tool window which means we can upload files by drag and dropping so for example I, I can just go here let's say i want to upload a random file to my home directory here to user 42 i can just do it and as you can see the file has been uploaded here let's see where where it went and here it is it is time to wrap up this video the remote file explorer tool window I, i'm a recording now okay is available starting from Visual Studio 2022 17.6 and more features and improvements are expected to come in the next Visual Studio releases. Your feedback is really fundamental for us. In the future, we plan to add new functionalities like searching for files, viewing, editing remote files, as well as introducing C++ project integrations such as navigate into the output folder of the currently selected debugging target, which might be useful to download or inspect the content of the last build. As we said, we welcome your feedback, which you can submit by creating a new suggestion on the developer community. You should find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye everyone.